Hey guys, I am going to give this a go. It's a bit windy today, but what we're going to do is put a strainer post in for this fence line here. This is a new fence line going in. That's X Vineyard, this little area. And we're going to put a new fence line running down here. Um, and we'll use those existing irrigation posts. But right here we need a strainer that's going to go in here. I've got a 2.2 meter long strainer post, a stay, uh, and then some offcuts for stay blocks and um, foots and what have you. So, pretty new gear, new resume, new shovel and um, spade there. Hasn't seen a lot of use yet, but um, I'll video how I do it. Um, everyone's going to be doing this stuff differently, but I'm a farmer from New Zealand, so I will show you my way and how I've learnt to put a um, strainer post in. Right, so like any um, like any post anywhere, it needs a hole. I do have a, uh, a still auger post hole borer, just a handheld one, but today we're going to be using just spades, shovels, what have you. I like to use a tarp to throw your dirt on, um, saves it going everywhere. So, where's the disconnect? Don't know if you noticed I slowed down a bit. It's because we've hit a pan. Now, a pan looks like quite nice digging, and it is for the top. But I've hit a pan now, and that's the this sort of shit. It comes up, and it's sticky, and it's hard. Um, so it makes it a bit harder digging. But usually you can get through that, and then it becomes nice again on the other side of the pan. Again, guys, I apologise for any wind noise, but I put my marker batten down beside me post. And if you've got chalk, it's always better to use chalk, but I've got a marker pen because chalk will come off. So this is for an eight wire fence, which is pretty typical in New Zealand. Eight or nine wire nowadays. High tensile, and I'm gonna have three hot wires on this one. So we're just marking off roughly where we want to put the post, and then ground level. Um, now, ideally, I would have liked to use a 2.4 meter post. Um, I didn't have any, so we're gonna go with the 2.2. And this ground is hard enough. I'm going to be able to ram it up hard and solid, and it will not move. I'll foot it. Um, it's going to have a stay. Don't even think it's going to need a breast block. The ground's that hard, so we'll um, chuck that in. And I'll show you my hole. See how far away we are. Shouldn't be too far away. If you can see down there. Should be able to ram that up nice and tight. And yeah. So I just threw a tape measure down my hole. I need to be 1100 down the hole because I want 1100 above ground. So that's, well, half that post. 
um, so I need to dig a little bit deeper in here and then I'll show you what I do to put a foot on and what we'll do seeing as how I'm gonna put a 12 foot gate here and then rails off to that but the strain is coming this way so my wires are coming towards me here and I'm gonna put a stay in and it's gonna to wanna to, the bottom of the post is gonna to wanna to kick out that way so that's where we that side is what we want to put the foot on and down here at the bottom of the hole I'm gonna dig a channel in the back there without taking away any structural integrity of that and we dig a bit under there so we can slip the post down put the foot back under this ground that hasn't been touched and that should be pretty solid I'm, I'm confident that this this will ram up pretty hard and we're not going to need a peg it or anything like that um, but yeah just need to dig a bit deeper and then I can chuck the post in and we'll start ramming it up we'll put a foot on it first and then ram it up Hitting some rocks now, stones. You can hear it. You have to keep checking the depth of your hole. You know it's hard digging. You don't really want to dig further than you have to in this shit. Definitely don't need a peg it. Won't need a breast lock. Probably wouldn't need a stay. But I'm going to put one on anyway because over but look at so if you look around so a 2.4 2 meter post would be way overkill for this um, this spot here it's gonna be plenty deep enough um, 1100 that ain't gonna pull out you always put the fat end of your post in the ground if you can if you're not ramming them in um, they look a bit funny with the fat end hanging out of the sky. But you'll notice that these posts here, strainers swinging a gate, 12 foot gate, they don't have stays. And I'm guessing, well I'm guessing they're a longer post for a start, but I'm also guessing that they won't pull over because this ground is hard. So not too far away now. So I threw my post in and it's got a little, got a little tiny bit deeper and I've chipped out a bit more um, so I can get my foot down there and I'll tuck it under and yes yeah, so I'll dig out a little bit more and then I'll show you how to put a foot on a post and, or how I do it there's a billion different ways to do it but this is how I do it move on to um, the foot to a post this is the way I do it this is an old quarter round um, Transferred over to my phone for filming now. My other one camera died. So I don't know where that cut out, but I've cut my little pocket for my foot to slip into. It's a little bit tight, which is a good thing. Making sure that these bits are sloped so you can push it down the hole um, easily. See if that'll tap in. Yeah, so that's 
so that's a nice, nice tight fit in there. Even it up a bit. Send it home. Um, now I'm going to grab a couple of bits of number eight over there and um, cut it. And what I'll do is put straps over from here, put a couple of staples in here, come over the top and strap it to the front here. And I'll do that on this side as well. Um, number eight lasts a bit longer in the ground than uh, any high tensile stuff. So that's what we use. Sometimes I like to put a little divot in here to hold the wires nicely while you're nailing it on. But um, I, I won't do that this time, maybe just add a staple or something. It's not going to move that foot though. So that's what the whole post and foot looks like at the moment. And you can see it's angled sort of like an arrow. So when I slip it down the hole, which I've, I don't know if you can see, I've dug a pocket under there so the foot will slip back under there. And then you ram up all around the post. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll nail that on, um, put the wire on, and I'll show you what that looks like after I'm done. I realise that wind is horrible, so we'll try and just get through it without speaking a whole lot. So I've got my two, two straps going to go on like that, and I'll staple them on. in the hole. I don't want your post leaning not too far back but lean it back because the strain's going to pull it a little bit, it won't move it too much, but a little bit it will. See my ground mark is just there. So I'll start, start ramming this up, the fence line, pretty bang on, near enough anyway for the wires will go on this side. I was always told if you've got leftover dirt then your post isn't rammed up hard enough. As you can see I've got some leftover dirt. This ground compacts pretty good. Um, having it on a tarp you always end up with spare but normally you end up digging another hole to fill up your post off. I promise you that's not going anywhere. There is zero movement in that. And in 10 years if I'm still around I'll make another video showing you this post what's that 2030 challenge on um, normally you would put in your wires first so in this case our wires running down there um, but because I know exactly where my fence lines going this was an old fence line already straight down here and for the sake of the video I'll put a put my stay block in or my stay post and block 
etc. in now, um, just to just to show you how how I do it. Um, but yeah, normally you'd put your wires in, run all your wires out, put all your other angles in, other strainers and stuff, and then tie your wires up. Don't don't strain them up, but um, you know have them reasonably tight, and then put your stay in so you know exactly where your wires going. Put your stay down. And then, um, then strain up your wires and it'll pull your stay tighter. But because I know where my fence line is, I'm gonna put my stay in now just for this video. And I know I usually go, got my, my wire marks here, if you can see that, one, two, just under the third wire is normally where I put my put my stay on an eight wire fence. So we will change all that up. There's the stay, stay post there, stay block, head up that way, dig a T. You can watch that happen. So that's the end of my stay. Um, just trim it up to make a square, and then um, we can put put that into the post and clean it up against it. Some people plane, plane the edges, but don't need to. We've got a nice square there. Oh, bit, bit off at the top there, I'll fix that up. Then I'll go lean it up against the post. So it's gonna look something like that. Um, there's a little gap in here, but once you seat that down, dig that down, that'll square it up a bit. Um, and it's just a bit, it's in a bit high, so we won't do it there, but I go just under the third wire down. But that's the idea. And you mark the back part here and start digging um, down there. Dig a box section or a T for your stay block. Yeah, I just had my post up, just drew around it, and I marked up where we're gonna chisel it out. Get back on the tripod. Oh, if I can make it work. Um, and I'll just chisel that out with the chisel and hammer. Some people like to do it with a chainsaw, but it does a little bit tidier of a job with the chisel.
What'll happen though, when we dig it down, it gets pressed, pressed into there. Might have to do a little bit more adjusting, but it should just about press into that pretty nice and tight, hopefully. So with that just sort of sitting in there, you can come back to the back of it. I know my, oh, my fence line's running off that way, so I know that's where I want it to be. Now, these are scary. You only got one shot of this. So I usually like to put my spade in about here somewhere, because when that post, stay post, drop it down, the angle's gonna go in a bit. So I always like to start, I don't know, maybe half a foot back, because you can always take some out. It's hard to put it back in. And then I'll build a, dig a T section for a stay block, and then, and then yeah, so we'll get to doing that now. So I've marked my spot, can move my stay post away now and start digging. go, I hope, knock it to the side of it, One nice tight stay block. Bit big, bit overkill, but I like doing them overkill. That's seated nice and look, it's not perfect, but that's pretty good for a farmer. <laughs> nice and tight in there, straight through to the fence line, and yeah, now just fill her up with dirt. You want to ram it up a bit not too much um, but there you go I won't show you the boring bits of filling it all up but it's how you do a post and a stay and angle is pretty similar um, it's just the way I do it uh, and then I'll swing the gate off of this one it's leaning you can see it's leaning back a bit more since I put, put the stay in but the wires will pull it tight and over time it'll um, sit up straight I like them leaning back a bit so they don't fall over forward, they look stupid. Um, some people like to round off the edges around the top here, I might do that with the chainsaw in a minute. But that's how, that's how I do it anyway. Post in the comments below what you think and if maybe a different way to do it, let me know because it's cool. I like seeing how other people do things. This is just one way, there's a billion ways to put a post in. And yeah, this is just one of them. So let me know how, how you think about this. And there it is, all said and done. Filled up the dirt. There's a little bit extra dirt there than I would like, but um, that's just the situation that this one was. Um, going a bit closer, I've taken the edge off the top just to make it look a bit tidier. People say that the water doesn't sit on them as much like that, but yeah. So that's just the way I do it. Um, if you do it a different way, that's cool. It's just the way I've been taught to do it and I've done it for years and it works for me. But if you've got a different way you do it, that's cool too. Um, so there it is. 
That's how I do a post and a stay setup in New Zealand.